Hey there, YouTube family. I am back to inundate your cerebral cortex with more useless facts about my experience while incarcerated. But first, please allow me to introduce myself for those of you who are tuning in for the first time. My name is JD, and I am an addict. I spent 20 years battling my disease in and out of jails, prisons, institutions, rehabs. I was a career criminal. That was the way that I supported my fucking addiction. Today, I own my own business in the recovery field. I am what is known as a recovery coach. I do so by mixing personal fitness training and recovery coaching because recovery is a system of mind, body, and spirit. It takes all three to get truly well. And while recovery is my real passion, what I really like to talk about and what I'm really into, it's important for me to never forget where the fuck I came from because the second that I forget how bad off it was, that's the moment that I start sliding fucking backwards and I cannot afford that because the life that I have today is far beyond my wild imaginings for the 20 years that I spent in addiction and crime. I also think it's important to be able to talk about these things with others because maybe, just maybe, if we're lucky, something that I say in one of these videos will make somebody go, you know what, I don't want to go that same fucking route. Maybe it'll cause somebody to reach out and say, you know what, I want help so I don't go any farther down this fucking hole. So with no further ado, let's talk about today's video. Those of you who watch my videos before, you know that in every video at the end, I ask if anybody has any video suggestions and this one came from the red outdoors they actually asked for it multiple times so boom i'm here i have been summoned and i am here for this fucking video we made a video about different types of CEOs. So it's only fair that we do a video about different types of inmates. And for those of you who've never done time, what you need to understand is that when you strip everything that people use to make up their identity away from them, all that they have left is whatever character they develop. That's why people who are incarcerated for long periods of time tend to be charismatic, have really strong personalities and really weird characters, which makes this video easy as fuck to make. We ain't even breaking a sweat today y'all it's also part of what i attribute to my own personality that adhd and being shot out on meth for 20 years it helped make me into the pillar of the community that you see today i've been drinking way too many of these shits i swear to god different types of inmates you will run into in prison let's fucking go excuse me sir do you know where the chapel is i don't care what you say only god can judge me do you know which way it is to the law library? I'm trying to petition to get my rights to own an ice cream truck back. My lawyer said not to talk about my charges. I was given a year and a day and six months probation. This is your standard ass chomo. You can usually find them shuffling through the halls, looking at the floor insecurely, walking like they still have leg shackles on, even though they don't. They almost always have a Bible in their hands. It's fucking crazy. Lots of Bibles for lots of forgiveness. And if you're Christian, don't get mad at me. I don't make the rules. I just know them. And the rule is, not everybody who goes to church is a chomo, but all chomos go to church. Don't believe me? Google it. Google it. <laughs> that shit's probably not on Google. And look, when I got to prison, I was expecting there not to be this many of these dudes just walking around on mainline. But like I said, I don't make the rules. I just know what they are because I was there and there's an established pecking order and these dudes are money for a lot of gang members. So extortion happens and that's how people eat. But don't think just because they're on mainline still that they're not getting regular fucking tune-ups because that is part of their program. For whatever amount of time that they have, they're always subject to a nice good fucking ass. Whooping. I always tell the ones that are still fresh because they have this air of entitlement like they're paying somebody so they like can't be touched and then they run into a motherfucker like me who just doesn't care knows every single fucking head of every single gang and we'll stomp the fucking shit out of them just because I don't like the way they breathe. These dudes will get terrorized, brutalized, and used up until their money goes dry and then they will be used as a torpedo or a crash test dummy which means that you send them on a mission. A mission generally consists of taking flight on another inmate that needs to be taken off the yard or sometimes even a CO. Then they'll go to the hole for a while, they come back and we start the process all over again. Hey dog, I talked to that pussy ass hoe, man. I told that motherfucker, bam, you know what I'm saying? Cut that motherfucker upside his head, gave him facial reconstructive surgery with the bottom of my boot, dog. My homie, when I fight, I just wipe the fuck out and everyone around me's knocked the fuck out, dog. That's how I got here, bro. I catch charges. I don't fight no more because I don't want to catch a life set for killing somebody. 
No, no, it ain't like that, dog. Nothing. It's all good. It's all good, bro. It's all good. I'm gonna go sit over here, dog. It's all good. That is your standard ass too hard for the yard, motherfucker. There are tons of these dudes in there. They bark all day long and they always talk about fighting and who they smashed out and how much fucking shit they did on the streets. But when it comes down to it, man, they are really just projecting so that they don't actually get tested. It is often the loudest dude in the room who is the weakest. And I fucking believe that, man. I've seen it so many fucking times. Times. These dudes will try to talk over motherfuckers, try to intimidate motherfuckers, but when it comes to putting fists in the air, bro, they back the fuck down and go where they belong. And yeah, when I'm making videos, I talk fast, I talk loud, and I fucking put it out there, you know what I'm saying? But that's just me, like, that's my ADD. In an institutional setting, man, I'm a lot more calm, I'm a lot more composed, and I'm a lot more calculated. I'm fairly confident in my ability to handle my business, but there's always someone bigger, there's always someone better, there's always someone faster, there's always someone someone better trained and even if you are the baddest motherfucker on that yard all it takes is one bad day with the wrong person and you could get fucked up the wrong way so I pick my fucking battles risk reward we talk about that a lot on my videos I don't go to war unless it's time to go to war these dudes are the same ass dudes who fucking think they're hard as fuck and then they end up pulling some cell warrior shit and they run into somebody who really is hard as fuck and it's fucking lights out for them. All of that is on some unnecessary drama and I don't got time for unnecessary fucking drama. Hey Holmes, what you need? I got it. You want a shank, a Rolex, a granola bar, heroin, cigarettes, a radio? What you need, dog? Tattoo gun, a cell phone, a razor? You want pictures of B. Arthur naked? What it is, homie? You know I'm the man. I got you. These dudes are resourceful as fuck. They can legit get you anything at a price. And they might use some aggressive sales tactics, but I'll tell you one thing, they will come through in the motherfucking clutch. The thing that I always found the absolute most astounding and useful about these types of cats is they know every single thing that goes on in any institution, man. Their information, their knowledge is more important to me personally than their wares that they sell because they can tell you the dirt on anyone, any guard, any lieutenant. They know what the fuck is happening in every corner of that fucking prison. I had beef with the CO because they did a cell search on me, put my fucking kids' pictures on the floor, and stepped all the fuck over them, and this dude came by the fucking cell sweeping about 45 minutes later with that cop's fucking license plate number for his truck. I love me some OG hustlers, man. They're good-ass people. The majority of them have done way too much time, whether it was on that set or the revolving door system. And unfortunately for these dudes, I feel like they're just way too fucking good at doing time. And they're probably going to keep coming back. I do not wish that on any of them because they deserve a better life. If they could take that shit and apply it in the real life world, become an entrepreneur and a hustler on some legal shit on the streets, these motherfuckers will put Elon Musk in a fucking casket. Wait, Twitter already did that. <laughs> Look, if you see an old dude who's fucking constantly quiet as fuck and he watches every single move that everybody makes on that fucking yard, all he ever does is fucking map out what everyone else is doing and work out, that dude is connected. That dude is about his shit. That dude is calculating. That dude is not the one you want to fuck with. These cats are sizing everyone and everything up at any given fucking moment. These motherfuckers know what time it is. They know what's about to pop off on the yard. They know five steps ahead of the fucking guards and every other fucking inmate on that fucking yard. That's a fucking convict right there. Those are the type of dudes that are making the major fucking moves and they know better than to fucking put that shit out on front street or try to make a fucking reputation for themselves. They lay back in the cut where it's fucking safe. They don't draw attention to themselves and they just do their fucking thing. Thing. But make no mistake, if somebody's getting real fucked up in that institution, they probably knew about it long beforehand if they weren't asked fucking permission. These motherfuckers are constantly working out because they're preparing for fucking war because they know that eventually some shit is gonna pop off, whether it's a gang war, a fucking riot, or just them needing to fucking get off on someone. They ain't trying to fucking flex because they know they're hard as fuck. They don't need to run out the side of their neck because they're not worried about it. They'll handle it and they'll handle it silently and they're the most likely to get away with it. It was one of these real scary, ice cold ass OG motherfuckers who told me the most gangster ass thing you can ever do in your life is get away with it because then you can come back and you can keep doing it to them over and over again. Now since then, I have come to my own conclusion that the hardest thing that I could fucking do, the most gangster thing that I could do is turn my life around, take care of my fucking 
fucking family and be of service to others. But in the penitentiary life, he is 1000% right. On the streets, he's 1000% right. I had to change up what I was doing and I had to change everything so that I could end up somewhere different than the fucking pen or the fucking streets. And that's what I'm on today. And oddly enough, when I got into recovery, I met a lot of these types of dudes, man. The OG motherfuckers who got their way out too. And any single one of them will tell you that it is the hardest fucking thing you're ever going to do in your life. These motherfuckers are real as fuck. These motherfuckers are about respect. These motherfuckers are about handling their business. They're about doing solid business. And they're about bettering themselves every single fucking day. So that was part one of different types of inmates. If y'all want more of these, if this is a hit, if this shit slaps, let me know in the comments because I could definitely go for fucking miles on this subject. I've met a lot of different types of inmates and some of these stereotypes are true as fuck. Other ones are just funny as fuck, but I guarantee you I have met a hundred of each one of these types of dudes that was in this video today. So if you like this video, let me know. You want a part two, get in the comments and let me know. Please subscribe to me. If you didn't like this video, probably just shh, because I like it. I like it. I'm with this shit. And as always, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here, family. I appreciate your fucking time. One love. Be good or be good at it. Damn.